Okay, I'm back. Hopefully you can hear me. What's up? This is Noble. Oh, I got to start that over. Hold on. I like to do my intros a certain way. This is Noble. Welcome to Inside of Trading. So I was live just a minute ago, but my audio wasn't working. So I'm going to give this a second. Let me know if you can hear me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can. I know what happened. A little technical snafu. It happens. It happens. Yeah, just keep rolling with the punches. That's all I can do. So let me know if you guys can hear me. I want to make sure that my audio is good before I dive in. Oh, there we go. Okay. I just heard myself. I double checked it. Okay, cool. So Felicia Bridges said, I can hear you. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know, y'all. Um, okay. Dang, that was a beautiful intro. Such a good intro. I'll shorten it because I want to jump to the meat. Insider Trading is a group, um, Facebook community full of traders, um, thousandaires, millionaires, newbies, uh, folks who are trying, getting it, thriving, trying to figure it out, everything. We got the whole gamut. Every walk of life. Primarily African American, which is really dope. Um, we're kind of pioneers in this space. We really are. Me and Joel have been doing our thing for a while. Um, and I've been teaching about investing and trading for, I don't even know, eight, seven, nine years, something. So, um, I've been seeing some posts on social media that are like, um, why is what makes marriage hard? What makes entrepreneurship hard? What makes motherhood hard? Seeing some really, really insightful, good answers. Like I love content, dialogue, healthy, meaningful dialogue. Y'all know me. So I was like, oh, let me try that out today. And so I posted it inside the trading. It was like uh, 28, 29,000, just like 30,000 people in the room. All right, so amazing, vibrant community. Just being in the room is all you need sometimes, right? That, that gets you started. That helps you to realize there are millions of other people trying to figure this out, learn it, and achieve and actually right, build wealth and get rich all right, at the same time. You're not alone, regardless of where you are. Right. So I posted that question today and I got like 40, 50 quick answers. Um, people giving me real life scenarios. This is what I'm struggling with. I don't know when to get in. I don't know when to get out. I get too greedy. Oh, my fear, my anxiety. All of these things, they're really like the same bucket of issues that most people struggle with, most traders struggle with. Investing's easy. It's so much simpler than trading. Like as soon as you go the trading route and think about it, most trading products, futures, stock options, foreign exchange, um, some crypto and um, uh, leveraged ETFs all use leverage, which means the buying power is stronger. You're not placing one dollar for a dollar. Your one dollar may give you the access to ten dollars. Right? We talking about start talking about futures. Your one dollar is not worth a dollar. You're making a hell of a lot more money than you actually have. Matter of fact, let me give you the math just real quick for fun, really quick. I traded. Um, I tra traded today. I trade. Uh, let me find it. 15, 8, 23. Okay. So think or some is the platform I use. Futures, the E the SP slash backslash ES. The S P. Let me pull it up real quick. So you can see it. I don't want to say. Let me take that off. Alright, so this is the weak chart. S P. The ES, which is the S P uh futures, right? Futures are the big boy, big money game. That's all it is. Most people are buying S&P. They're buying the ETF, which functions like a stock. You buy it, it goes up. You can short it when it goes down, right? Don't get stuck on the names, right? All this stuff works the same way. Crypto futures foreign exchange. It's going up and you're buying, you're long, you're making money. If it's going down and you're shorting, you're making money. All right, we can simplify all these different markets down to that, right? So the S&P futures... S&P futures on thinkorswim to place one trade, one contract, it's 15,800 bucks, right? So you need that in your account just to place a trade, 15,800. 
But here's the here's the crazy part when we start talking about leverage and and why trading is difficult. It's difficult because you're literally using more money most in most with most of these products. You're using more money than you actually have. <laughs> you're using leverage and margin to make faster money because you don't have hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to trade. So all these products, futures, foreign exchange, um, stock options, they they bring the cost down dramatically. They give you buying power to make more than you really can afford, all right? Which, you know, it's kind of, it's capitalism one-on-one, right? So uh, 15,000, uh, what is, what is uh, the ES's price today? So it said 38.11. So here's the math. Experts should know the math. 38.11, so multiple of 50. So I'm actually, if I, the the contracts that I trade, or if you trade the ES, you're putting up, you got to put up 15000 just say $16,000, which sounds like a lot. And it is technically, right? It's, it's not a little bit of money, right? That's not the average person's account. I think half of Americans don't have $1,000 in their savings account. So 16 Gs is it's a lot comparative, right, to in aggregate. But if you hit that button, what you're actually trading, you're not trading $19,000 worth of money. You're trading roughly $200,000, but you only got to put up $15,000. All right. So that's leverage. That's why futures, foreign exchange, stock options, that's why those markets are so attractive. But you got to know what the hell you're doing. And the psychology is tough. It's a lot to, you know, deal with. Um, it's not easy. It's simple. We write out the principles, how to do this, how to do this. It's simple. It's not a million complex steps. The math is fifth grade math, but it's incredibly hard. Why? Because you're human. Psychology. Trading exposes things to you about yourself. Your real fears come out. Your real beliefs come out. You start making mistakes. You get on the wrong side of every trade. Why can't I seem to win? Why, why are my losses always bigger than my wins? Or why, do I, why can't I just... It's your psyche. It's up here. Now, some of it is skill for sure. But even the best, most skillful, you can literally watch a great, perfect trader trade every day. You come to my house, watch me trade every day. You still would make mistakes based on you and your psyche. And everybody's different. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to, uh, let me see. I'll do it that way. I want to pull up these questions. But I want you guys to be able to see them. So give me one second. I'll pull these up. Uh, not questions, but comments from people. Just real, real people in the room that I know. You know so one sided conversation, two, technically, you know, between me and you, you can't talk back, but I want to help. All right. So I'm going to help. So uh, let me find. Oh. Uh, let um, Yeah. Okay. I'll do it this way. A couple different ways to do it. All right, let me make this a little bigger, a lot bigger. Here we go. Pull it back so I can see it. Okay, so what's the hardest part of trading to you? I'm going to just go down the list. So this is going to be nice and easy. It's going to be relaxed. I'm going to just go through some things. I want to share some gems, some experience, some examples, uh, some tips, some hacks. My goal is to help you. All right, my goal is to help you. I want you at the end when you get something. Some of my students who just love me. I think Charles may have came up with this. One of my students started writing on all his posts whenever I dropped something. He was like, Noble taught me. I said, oh, I like that. Because my, my real goal, not only to make you money, but it's to help you learn. There's a lot of gurus out here and they talk about the money, the money, money. And, it, and that is the result of all this information being digested and you being able to do something with it. But a lot of people can't teach. They can't teach effectively. They actually make, it's a lot of traders out here who've made most of their money from classes and not like actually trading. Um, for me, it, it really, from day one, was a balance of both. I love trading. I love this the intellectual challenge of this thing. I love what it does for my life, what it's done for my life. Um, but I also love teaching. I love people. I really do. I got a um, degree, um, MBA in marketing, right? So marketing is, you know, it's like 
the the teaching the psychology of commerce and selling products and brand right? it's, it's it's related it's very much so related you got to be a great teacher to be a great marketer all right okay so um let me pull this up where i can see it this way y'all can't see what i'm saying okay here we go so hardest part of trading to you uh 53 comments i'm gonna just start from the top so my home girl ontario reed said no one went to hold them and when to fold them <laughs> i always can tell like this is what i do i'll post something and i kind of know where to put my focus based on how many people like that comment all right now usually the first comment in most posts because i post a lot of different types of content conversations all kind of stuff the first person usually sets the tone. If, if the first comment is a good comment with a lot of that, a lot of people like it'll just get, you know, the algorithm clicks in and you know, it'll get the rolling, right? So this one got a lot of likes. Um, really quick. Um, no one went to hold them and fold them. So I said exit strategy. Cause here's the thing. Sometimes you guys don't even know what the real problem is. Right? Like, what does knowing when to hold them and fold them really mean? To me, as somebody who, you know literally loves and, and has a skill set and experience to help you. Um, I need to be really detailed and pull out the right question and make sure I'm answering. Right. So what I said was, what are we talking about? Are we talking about your exit strategy or where to place your stop? And that's not even always the same thing. I know we think your stop loss is, is the exit. Technically your stop loss includes your exit strategy, but there's something called a visual stop loss. What is that? You don't actually place the order to get out at that price. You put an alert there. You visually watch it to see what price does when we get there. Because that might be an area where, you know, you have a, you know, it might go up to test that area. But it's not like you really need to take a loss. And if we close above, we keep pushing, we get through that area, then you may decide to take, right? So all of this stuff is so layered. It's literally so layered. I could pull all of these answers apart and literally do a whole straight 24 hours live just to go through these questions, which I'm not about to do clearly. Um, so she said, yeah, that's correct. Sometimes I get out too early or even stay in too long. So let me capture this for a second for you. If you can relate to that, this is what I want you to do. I'm going to go through these questions. I want you to think, is that me? Right? Cause everybody, as you're going to see, everybody really has the same kind of like core five, six issues. Right? but you're different and there's little nuances to kind of answering and solving each. So um, where am I? So she said, yes, that's correct. Sometimes I get out too early or even stay in too long. So for me, getting out too early, simple, clear, easy question. Do you have a specific target? Do you know exactly where you want price to go? And here's the fun metaphor. <laughs> Right, this is sports, y'all. This is sports. When Curry throws up the ball behind the three point line, doesn't he know like exactly where he wants the ball to go with every play that's drawn up? Don't you literally know exactly how you want the defense to move? You know exactly every offensive play, you know exactly like everything's already foretold, right? So when we're trading and we don't have um, we have this issue of you're getting out too early. You either don't have a target or you just don't honor it. Now, I can't help you with the not honoring it, right? That's where the discipline comes in. I go back to where you literally could learn from the most world's greatest trader who's made billions of dollars. Still don't mean you can do what he or she does, right? Different psyche. So do you have a stop? I mean, do you have a target? Do you have a target? Do you have a target? Let me show you something real quick. Let me show you something. I gotta show y'all this real quick. I gotta show you this. Um, I've been, you know, I've been trying to help people with this um recently. Hold on, let me let me share. Oh, 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 I gotta share a different screen. Hold on. Let me share my actual chart for a second. I can't pull them up both at the same time. That'd be pretty dope. Okay. So peep this. Uh let's do this. I'm gonna go to I'll go to, let's go to a 30 minute chart. And um, I'll actually go to, I wanna go to yesterday. 
I could go to any day, but I'll go to yesterday. Matter of fact, let me take um oh no. Nope. Uh, oh, okay, let's do it like this. So I got a clean chart, 30 minutes. I'm gonna add one thing. One thing. Actually, I'm gonna add two. I'm gonna give y'all two gems today. So I'm adding daily high low. The daily high and low. Right. I think of some you should know how to do this. Gotta know your platform. That's a part of the game. It's the emotion. It's like four pieces. You gotta know some fundamental information about what you're trading and why. Gotta have the emotional discipline, the self-belief, the the esteem to to actually make the money. Because if you don't believe you're worth it, you're not gonna make it. There's a lot of what a lot of people don't know. Right? You're you're literally trading against a lot of your trading issues, might be your own self. Literally, your self-worth not being there. You're not going to make money if you don't feel worth it. You're just not. All right? That's the psychology behind this. Um, so, you also have to know your platform well, because this is the tool. If you don't know your platform, how do you know how to move and shake and how to place the right? You got to know your platform. Whatever platform you use, you got to know it. I got to keep looking up here. I forgot y'all up there. My bad. Okay, so what I added, check this out. This was yesterday. All I added was the high and the low from the previous day. All right. And what you'll notice, <laughs> this is super simple. If you're a day trader and you don't have pivots and daily high lows, we go to them every single day. We're going to test the previous day's high or low or both. We might break it. We might, but we only can, if you pull up a day chart, we only can make trends when we're breaking the highs of candles. All right. Pivots are intraday um, support and resistance levels, these little dots. All right. But they're based on the previous day's information. The market is very organized, y'all. It's very organized. So what happened yesterday? I'm going to put some little circles. I'm just put some little circles. Market opened. We pushed perfectly to the high of the previous day. That's where I made money yesterday. Unfortunately, I stopped trading because it was some quick, easy money. And then the market turned around. And then what did we do? Um, Once, now, I can't like give you my strategy, but somewhere in here in this 30-minute candle, there was a trigger for me to say, hey, the market is turning over. It's rolling over. The uptrend is turning down. Where's the next major target? We hit this pivot, which I know we're always going to a pivot. If we get through that pivot, guess what? We ran right back to the low. The low and the high are huge. They're magnets for where price goes because we all pay attention to them. Right. Price went a little bit lower. And where did we go? We ran straight to this pivot. So so for me, if we talking intraday. I mean, I'm gonna keep it super simple. Your targets. Simple, makes sense. It's advanced and basic. They should be previous day highs or lows. And pivots. That's it. That's all you got to do. Previous day highs and lows and pivots. Um, I can pull up. I can pull up and pull up a stock real quick. Go to Apple. I'll pull up Apple real quick. Real quick. Then I'm gonna go through more questions. I didn't mean to go this slow. This will take like 95 hours if I keep going this slow. Look at today. What happened today? Apple today. 30 minute chart. We opened. Where did we open? We opened at yesterday's low and we ran straight to a pivot. We went straight up and ran directly to a pivot. We did the same thing yesterday. Um, this was what's today Wednesday so I guess this was a uh, so we came down Monday's open we pushed up nowhere to really go there's nothing up there we came right back down to the pivot I mean to uh, the previous low all right so these intraday pivots and the daily high and low huge 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 now that's my day traders I know some of y'all are thinking like dang what's up with the swing trade now I could do the same thing on Swing Channel. Let's do that real quick. All right, let's go to the week really quick. Real quick. Week chart. Apple week. Week chart. You swing trading. Okay, cool. Real quick, real quick. Now, <laughs> I can't help you see these entries. I can't like teach a whole, but this little candle right here, this little hammer, right? It's a reversal signal. It, it means there's a high probability that bulls during that week are slowly getting out, right? We were already bearish. Nothing in the economy was really good, All right? So if we could go back in time, I would have told you to buy some puts on Apple. If we get under that week's candle, which we did, 
And what's the target? Where should you reasonably expect price to go? Reasonably. Right. Reasonably right here. Why? Because that was the last low. That was support. All we do is bounce from break. A, we hit a low. We bounce. Oh, bulls are trying to buy. Oh, we fading. We look. Uh, bears are taking over. We come right back down to the same place. This stuff is very predictable in terms of where uh, price is most likely to go. All right. So, um, I mean, s swing highs and lows. Finding these little areas where even on like the week chart, you see this was the last major bounce. We were in a downtrend. We pushed up. As it starts to come down, where are we going? We're going to test the low because we can't go lower unless we break a low. We can't go higher unless we break the high. That's why highs and lows matter. It's like 101 and 501 all day. It really is. Okay. So you won't see uh you won't see the questions because I'm not gonna go back and forth with this screen. I'm gonna just talk to them. So hopefully that helped. That's a tip. That's a gem. I use I use both of those every single day. I've been trading over 10 years. So trying to help. Trying to help. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You're welcome. Welcome. All right. Brittany James said, knowing when to enter and knowing I need to swing trade, but still trying to day trade. That's an interesting one. Knowing when to enter. And think about that. Even for me, I'm like, she didn't say where to enter. She said when. All right, so even those little nuances like that, if I was talking to her, if I, could, if I had her in the consult, I'd say, walk me through when you trade and how you trade. What time frames are you trading on? When people say when, you're kind of giving me a little insight as to like, it might be a timing thing. You might just be on the time frame that's a little too fast for your skill set. You should not be trading on the one minute or even the day. I know the day, everybody goes to the day chart. You think the day is basic. The day is actually slightly more advanced than a newbie should really be even on you should be on a week it's less candles there's less fluctuations you can see the trend clearly easier it literally is easier but everybody wants to make super fast money so we go to these super fast time frames using leverage all right so uh, let me go back to her comment so that was the first part and then she said um and knowing i need to swing trade but still trying to day trade once again that's the discipline i can't give you <laughs> If you've already self-assessed, I should not be day trading. I shouldn't be day trading, but I am. If you know you shouldn't be day trading, but you are, you have an ego issue. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, just got real. You got an ego issue. You know why? Because you know that you shouldn't be doing something, but you're still doing it, which is a little bit of like self-sabotage on some level. All right? A lot of people get into trading and start thinking like this. You start talking like this. And I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. That's literally how people start acting. They win a few trades. You're in a little group. Somebody made you some money. You're like, man, this trading thing, e this is easy. This is so easy. And the way you approach, even though you really don't have the built up skill sets, discipline, mentor, community, accountability from somebody, you, you approach the market like this. And I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. And you're not the best ever. You're not. This is challenging. This is a very challenging profession. It's a challenging set of activities to master. Because when you start talking about mastering trading, you're really talking about mastering yourself. Mm. It's what we're really talking about. Mastering yourself, right? So I can't help you with the discipline to not trade. But if you know you shouldn't be day trading, you know, you, you just you have to be honest with yourself, which is why I said it's an ego thing. Because it sounds cool to say, yeah, I, you know, I control my time. Oh, I'm a day trader. Like it. There's a there's a uh, a cachet to, to even saying it. If when I'm like out visiting, you know, traveling, and people, are like, oh, what do you do? You know, because I'm out at random times because I don't have a nine to five job, and I'm like, oh, you know, trader, investor, you know, coach, whatever. And I'm like, oh man, like, they instantly people just like this. Like I become 
mini G, mini Jesus of capital to them. I become like the, their little money god. Like, yo, how, yo, you gonna help me make some money? It's like, I would like to, yeah, but it's not gonna be, you know, easy. It's not necessarily how this goes. There's pain involved in the process. It is. Even if pain for you is just the time to learn it. All right. So, uh, Brittany, if you know you shouldn't be day trading, please, 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 please. Like it's my money you trading. Please stop trading. I'm going to be with y'all today. Please stop day trading our money. Don't day trade our money. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm going to be with y'all today. Uh, D said, for me, it's the entry. I get in too early. I said, how do you know it's too early? Think about that. When people say I got in too early, how do you know the entry was too early? Like, what are you framing? the in Like, because clearly somewhere in your mind, there's like a right and a wrong entry. So if you're too early, either you don't know what the actual for you based on your strategy, you haven't um, outlined it well enough to know when to actually enter. Or once again, you're dis you're undisciplined. And you know you shouldn't get in until price does this, but you're like, oh, I think it's going to go. Let me just get in early because you're thinking about you're cheating your own system. The point of making these systems and having rules around I'll do this if this happens is to make it very mechanical, process driven and not emotional. I'm not going to take a short. Let's go with longs because that's easy for most people to understand. I'm not going to when I'm uh, in day trading mode or any mode. Right. I'm not going to go long. I'm not going to hit that buy button. If the squeeze, which is one of my favorite indicators, is red. Red means it's bearish. The probability is not with me. So every time I undisciplinedly, if that's a word, would take a trade, and I don't do that like hardly ever. But I'm human. I'm still emotional. So I, I'm clearly probably in a year. I probably do 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 that a few times, right? Thinking I'm smarter um, than my system. But the systems you design. Right. Without any emotion. That's when we design and come up with when and where. But then when you're actually trading, all the emotion hits you. Right. So I'm never taking a trade long. If the squeeze is red, it just don't make sense. Right. So so I'm not even and even if the trade works out where the market does then later give me the long. I don't look back and say, dang, I should have got in earlier. Oh, I should have got in earlier because, yeah, that works today. But tomorrow when I do it, I'm going to lose. And we talk a lot about our financial accounts, our like the financial capital. I got a homeboy. Shout out to B. Brandon. He always is talking about a mental capital. You have mental capital, a mental account too. Your losses. Think about this for a second. I just want to give y'all some gems. Think about this. Think about if you had $10,000 in your account. And you said, you know what? I don't want to lose. It's a small account. You know, you got more money, whatever. whatever. You know, you're married. You're doing well. Okay, cool. You pull some money. You got $10,000 in the account. How much are you risking on your trades? Right? Let's say you're risking, let's say there's a trade where you risk a uh, thousand is ten percent. So what one percent is a hundred bucks. Let's say you risk two hundred bucks on that ten thousand dollar account on this specific trade. It's only two hundred bucks. Options trade. That's two percent. But if you get in that trade and you lose, and let's say as soon as you get in, it instantly goes against you. And you're like, oh. This this was terrible, like, ugh, because you were too early or something was off. Here's the thing. Even if you lose that 200, yeah, your, your financial, your account only dropped 2%. But depending upon you and your psyche, you as an individual, your mental account, your discipline, your level of being able to perform after a loss. Curry shoots the shot, misses, misses the second, misses the third. You know how hard it is to keep shooting after you've been missing? That takes mental fortitude and strength. It's the same thing with trading, right? So if your mental account, I might lose 2%. My mental account is only down 2%. I can take another trade, logically. You might be the person that, even though you lost that 2% really fast, it may have literally zapped 30% of your mental account for the day. You're done. Stop trade, like, right? So, so this process, this thing, this journey of like becoming a trader and really thinking incredibly logically and being honest about your emotions, it requires, it requires that type of thinking. Like every trade, 
you're thinking about the money you'll lose, but what will it do to your mental account? I would argue you need to match up your trades, your losses with your mental account, even more so than your financial account. Because if your mind isn't in it, it doesn't matter. You're going to lose. doesn't matter. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go faster. I'm going to try to. Y'all know I'm lying. <laughs> Marco, uh, Marco said taking losses. Um, let me see. What else did he say? He said, that's why I have to uh, have to get better. Of course, we're taking profits. By the way, I'm trading. Tell me what he was trading, what you've teached about the market testing yesterday's highs and lows has helped. All right. So um, good comment. Pivot points. I covered pivot points earlier. If you just joined, watch this again. Trust me. Watch this again. Uh, let's see. My guy, Mr. Wash, said, uh, trust in myself to stay in. I said, trust in yourself. Hmm. All right. Series of questions. Trust in yourself. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means exactly. That's a huge word, trusting yourself. That's like, man, my, my ex did tell me this. <laughs> That's like being in a relationship and your woman is like, like, I, I don't, I don't trust, like, I have some trust issues. It's like, trust? You don't trust me. Because inherently you think you, right, you think you're trustworthy. Why don't you trust me? So when you don't trust yourself, you know how hard that is to figure out? You can at least ask somebody else, why don't you trust me, baby? You might get a good answer. You might not. You might not like the answer, right? It's a relationship. You got a relationship with yourself. So I said, trust in yourself. Hmm. Are we talking about day trading or swing trading? Because the speed of trying to do it. So I'm always like, day trading, swing trading, investing. What are we talking about? Right? Because sometimes people are just, you're trying to day trade. You don't have the skills, money, and discipline, study habits. You just shouldn't be doing it, period. Most people aren't successful at it for a reason. Because we don't prepare and work our way up to that level, which, you know, eh, maybe good or bad. I mean, I jumped in the day, uh, day trading game, but I also was making six figures 10 years ago. So I didn't need the money. It didn't matter if I lost every day. It didn't matter. I still was making six figures, right? So I asked him, I said, so what are we talking about day trading? I mean, I said, why don't you trust your trade? Any insight into your own psyche? Haven't traded successfully long enough? You need to build some success. You need to build that mental capital to know you can do it. I said, fear, fearful of success? Might be some weird thing from your childhood. You're just afraid of doing well. Some of y'all are literally afraid of doing well and don't even know it. Need the money too badly? Some people are trading, heard about this trading thing, jumped into it, and you're so desperate and ready to make some money because you need it. But you really, if we're being honest, you really don't have all the things that come together that really make trading possible for most people who do it well. All right. Last question. I said, not focused um, and taking decent, but not optimal trades. I ask people this all the time. What's the best trade you can take? Like what, what's, what do you perfectly want to see every day that if you saw this pattern every day or every week or whenever, how often you trade, if you see this, you know exactly what to do without blinking. It's like Curry being at the top of the key with nobody on him. What do you think he's going to do? Without even thinking he's going to shoot with perfect form. Can you have perfect form when nobody's on you? When the trade gives you what you want? Or do you not even know what to look for? Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine being a basketball player. I'm just keep using basketball metaphors all day. Imagine being a basketball player. And you really, like, you don't even know what. You get the ball, but you don't even know, like, when it's most optimal for you to shoot. You don't even know what you shoot best. All right, so I'm not beating up on y'all. Trying to give you, you know, the questions that matter because you got to think through this stuff. You have to. Uh, let's see. Miss Sutton, what's up? She said that can be applied as a principle for a lot of areas. Principle for a lot of areas, yeah, for sure. Sure. Christopher John said, man, I'll definitely say Noble Woods. Noble L. Woods taught me. Don't forget the NBA. Put the NBA on that. Because <laughs> I paid a lot for this NBA. Uh, let's see. Tony said, glued to this all the way from South Africa. Hi, brother. That's what's up, man. What's up, bro? All the way from South Africa? That's what's up. I appreciate that. Appreciate you for watching. For sure. For sure, for sure. Okay, let me hear some more questions. Let me hear some more questions. Man, it's hot. It's, it's hot. I need to go turn the air on. I thought the air was on. I gotta uh, go turn the air on before y'all start seeing me sweat. <laughs> uh, let me 
me see where where oh okay my guy charles holland said um wow i'll target great entries it's the exit i'm working on while i target great entries it's the exit that i'm currently working on so yeah exit is what i struggle with to be specific jumping out too early same problem ontario had same problem somebody else mentioned getting out too early entry exits all of that is really like it's really to me saying you don't have a defined well-defined strategy that you're applying every day my targets are generally the same every day i don't have to think about them i just want price to run to the next major pivot high or low that i can see that's based on a certain you know has to be a certain you know i like 30 40 needs to be like 30 40 points away why because i'm risking 10 points to make 30 to 40 and some days yeah i'll take 10 or 20 if it's close enough yeah, okay i but at least i'm very aware of my risk to reward i never risk more than i want to and i can't teach a whole class on that right now but if we think about it for a second Think about it like this. What I told him was, I said, you know what the funny thing is? The tricky part about this is your entry is your exit. And your entry is your exit. And here's what I mean by that. Trust me, as somebody who's done everything you can do and taught some really, really great traders, <laughs> people that went on to, uh, I would say, to be, you know, to do really, really well, really well, really well. Um. Most people are trading with the trend. They're trend traders. You need to know that. What type of trader are you? You're a trend trader. Most people are. 99% of people are trend traders. It's incredibly hard to counter trend. But counter trend traders are entering. Think about this. Oh, I could pull it up. Think about this. I'll, show, I'll give you guys a good example real quick. Think about this. Think about this. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me find. Let me find one. I'm going to go to the 30. Um, where do I want? What's an example? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was you yesterday. It was yesterday. All right. So this little move up here, all right, that little move there. Let me put a little box. So I told y'all, oh, this is Apple. Hold on. Apple. Oh, you know what? And I said I was going to do this yesterday, so I'm glad I caught myself. I want to make sure y'all can see the charts better. So let me turn these green um, so you can see those candles filled in. There we go. So green is up, red is down. If you're brand new, green is up. Price went up in that time frame. These are 30-minute time frames. From the time that candle opened to the time it closed, price went up. If it's red, price dropped during that 30 minutes. All right, that's how simple it will. Simple that is for just identifying price. That's not reading a chart. People think you can read a chart because you can tell what the colors mean. A, a four-year-old could probably tell you what the colors mean. It doesn't mean they can read a chart. All right. So here's the thing. If we're just looking at, just looking at the previous night, because futures is a 20, it's not 24-7. It's more like a 23-5, right? You can trade middle at night, right? So this is Europe. This is when Europe's market opened. This is when our market opened around 6 p.m. over here is when Japan's market opened. Right, So you got three overlapping markets, world market. Based on where we were at, uh, what time is this? 10, 30, 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We were in an uptrend, in an uptrend. All right. Yesterday, we were in an uptrend. Right at the open, though, what happened? We pushed up, which is where I made some money. I exited here because it just made sense to be conservative and hop out, you know, take some easy profit. Super fast trade. It took like, I don't even know, seven, eight minutes, right? Then price turned around. So here's the thing. I was trending. But if I was a counter trend trader, you know what I would have been looking for? I would have been looking. I would have been hoping if I was a counter trend trader, I would have been hoping price would have pushed up to hit the high, hoping we could not break it so that we would turn around and drop and go back to the low. All right, so when I told him, I said, yo, entries or exits, I know that's 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 a bit advanced, but I want to kind of, what I'm saying when I say that is when when somebody's getting out, somebody's getting in. That's why the market kind of flows very, I don't even know. It's, it's actually very organized. It's nowhere near as chaotic as you think. It's really not. This stuff is very organized. 
I guarantee you there was somebody who who saw yesterday when we hit this high. Now, maybe they didn't buy or start to short perfectly at the high. But somewhere in this candle, somewhere in here, they went the other direction. They started shorting. Why? Because we hit the high and did not break it. Which means that smart bulls are going to say, hey, uh, we didn't have enough volume. We didn't have enough strength to break that high. Uh, maybe, maybe I should go ahead and take my profit. Maybe I should go ahead and take my profit. All right, so literally, and trust me, how do I know this? Because I can trend trade and trend trade, and I've done both. And trending is a hell of a lot simpler. Um, and to even try to do both, you have to like totally flip your mind. The entry is now the exit. The exit is now the entry. Because you're going the opposite way. As a short, as a counter trend trader, I, I if I'm short and I'm a counter trend trader. I want to wait until bulls are are exhausted. I want to catch bulls at the highest moment where they just don't have enough people and more bulls getting in. That's the best. That's the best place to short. All right? It's buy low, sell high. You sell it when it's high, when it pushes up and oh, they don't have enough. Cool, I'm getting in. All right? That's this bat baton exchange going back and forth with bears and bulls. That's all it is. All right? Uh uh, Millie Block, what up, bro? He said, definitely a harder concept for most counter tr counter trend trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't have to ever do it, <laughs> right? You don't have to ever be a counter. Like you don't have to be. Most of the time, the trend is your friend anyway, right? That's the little mantra, right? The trend is your friend. Why do we say that? We say that because mathematically, um, the market will trend. It'll give you more opportunities in a trend than to counter trend. It does. Uh, let's see. Kevin Andrews or Andrew um, said, having the time to actually do it. Let's talk about time. For some of y'all, time is an issue. What does that mean? So there's a lot of different assets. Um, I told him what I said was, yo, you realize, because I see a lot of people doing this. They're trying to day trade options. You're trying to watch your trades every, like, every day, in and out, every day, in and out, every day. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back real quick to this Apple chart. Go back real quick to this Apple chart. Matter of fact, no, I ain't gonna even use Apple. I'm gonna use uh I'll keep it simple. I'm gonna use NASDAQ. And what am I going to do? If you can't day trade or you can't really swing and you don't like you got a nine to five wife, husband, it's just a lot going on. How do you simplify? How do you make it work where you still can trade? You can find the time, make the time. It's a couple different ways. One is this you go to a week chart. Which means you really only need to look at this chart every week. At the end of every week, you have a new confirmed candle, new information, a newly developed part of the story. All right. So check this out. If we could go back in time, I'm going to go to the same little chart, same one. All right. If we could go back in time, then this little line right here, 124, trust me when I say it, this is when NASDAQ started to go into a downtrend. You just got to trust me for, for a second. Trust me. You could argue it was a little earlier, but generally speaking, yeah, generally speaking, that's when we broke uh, out of some uh, uh, range. We started to make a new low. A couple major indicators that are just some of the power, most powerful, best tools that I know work. That was when we started to go bearish. And we've been bearish the whole year. Starting early in January, right? In, in middle end of January, right? So here's the thing. If this was the chart right now, and today was Sunday, Sunday, and you know we're in a downtrend, and you've done your research, and there's some other economic things that are out there, right? You want to sell high. You want to buy low, sell high, but you want to sell either as a counter trend trader when the market's up and way so high that all the bulls are going to start taking profit, or you actually want to um, go with the trend. You want to sell high, but in a downtrend. We were in a downtrend. So if this was literally today was Sunday, in pretend land today was sunday you don't have time to trade during the week oh i can't figure it out you might need to just trade off the week charts which slows it down for you it's the same basic tools principles processes in place right so what am i saying this candle all right it's a hammer topping tail hammer uh gravestone doji ish but a doji is a sign of confusion right so that candle because it pushed up and we got that long wick it's kind of letting you know, yeah, bulls are getting a little weak. 
So we had a really strong week of on th- March 14th. Strong candle, big week. All right, market went from 315 to 352. Next week, little uh, not as many people, not as much volume, didn't move as much, range tighter. Third candle, we pushed up, uh, and then those people started, oh, they started getting exhausted. You literally can, that's what we're talking about when we say reading the market. These last three candles right here are telling you a story. Strong bulls, continuation, and here we get a um a weakening candle in a downtrend. If we break the low of this candle, we should go right back to the low. You could have done this on Sunday. You could analyze 50 stocks if you're only looking at the week chart on a Sunday. The day charts, it's a lot more information. It just is. You're going to be more confused. The faster the time frame, the more you're going to be confused because you receive more fakes. Go out of time frame, it's a little bit clearer. All right? And what happened? We came right back down. Do, 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 do. Came right back down. Now, I know you're like, oh, that was, yeah, but, you know, it's like you went back in time and did that. Yeah, I did, but that fundamentally is what I teach, <laughs> how I've learned to trade, how I think. Like, it's so ingrained in me. You give me a chart, I, I always am going to see that move, that push where bulls are trying in a downtrend. You want to sell high and you want to target. Uh, you want to target these lows because that's where bears want the market to go. We want it to go lower. All right. Okay. So hopefully that helped a little bit, a little bit. Uh, let's see. Next question. Oh, other thing too. Um, some people trade foreign exchange and then futures because you can trade six o'clock, seven o'clock, ten at night, three in the morning. When I first started trading years ago, I was working for Bank of America. I was making six figures. I I loved my job in the sense of it provided for me, but I was like, man, I got to get this money. <laughs> I got to get this money, y'all. Not, y'all not going to pay me what I'm worth. I know I'm worth millions, hundreds of millions. I know that about me. Back to the self-esteem thing. I know what I'm worth. You can't put a price tag on Noble. You can't give me no 100000 for the rest. 100, 150, 175 and expect. No, nah, no, nah, I'm too smart too focused i got too many gifts i got too many talents i trust god too much you know no i knew that was not gonna be a ceiling just getting a check from corporate america i knew that so guess what i did i made time winning is i was gonna play my little winning quote i love this quote from jordan here's my here was my mindset i'd do anything to win (laughs) that was the mindset what did he say? I do anything to win. Anything. Yeah. Now, no, you know, legally, you know, anything legal, anything with, you know, your morals intact. I got a moral compass. My name is Noble. I should. You should too. <laughs> you do, whether you uh, whatever. Um, but I would wake up at three, four in the morning to trade. And specifically, I picked futures as a market, as an asset class to trade, to give me the leverage to make the faster money. I could, and I did some Forex. I mean, it's all the same to me now, but I don't really like Forex. Like, it's just, I don't, you know, international policy, like the things you need to study to really get Forex. I just, I'm not intrinsically, I don't gravitate to. All right. Like, I'm, I don't per se love economics. I understand it, but it's, it's kind of boring stuff, you know, um, in a way. So. Futures was my my bread and butter. All right. It's what Joel, when we first met, you know, what I put him on to. Um, yeah, I won't say his name. I'm gonna have a conversation. Uh, I'm gonna have a conversation soon, hopefully. But um somebody I know, for those who know me, know me. Really, you know close we were close for a really long time somebody i put on two futures who's going on to do incredibly well blown up brand bigger than mine all of that stuff i'm i'm there's a part of me that's proud because that's this process i brought joel on i mean joel brought put me on the futures i ain't know nothing about no futures i'm like what the hell are futures all right i put somebody else on hoping you grasp it take it serious and he did and i did joe right so there's this thing there's this mentorship thing involved too but anyway back to the time i chose futures why because 
when I said, dang, well, I got a nine to five and they got me all these meetings. Oh, God, dog, long day. I got to figure out the time to trade. So guess what? I got to sacrifice. I got to wake my butt up at three, four in the morning, find my trade, take it, make or lose my money, go back to sleep. I had a student, um, <laughs> friend of mine now, student. Uh, she's amazing. Her and her husband, they learned um, how to trade futures with me a couple years ago. They were actually like my first little pilot. You know, we uh, it probably took me about like four or five months to teach them what took me years to learn. Really, really smart people. Really smart. Just good down to earth, smart people. Got a family, you know, just all that stuff. Um, you know what she was doing, y'all? She was she was day trading futures, making more at her job when she first started. Right, before the just kind of stress of the job got a little whatever. Um, and she was telling her boss that she needed 30, 40 minutes every morning to pump breast milk. Now, I'm not suggesting you do that. <laughs> I realize that, that that is not the truth. Somebody mentioned to me the other day, I was having this conversation. It was like, sometimes you like, you got to do a little wrong to get something right. And I was like, hmm, I don't know if I can fully agree with that morally, but I don't know. You know, it's what she decided to do for her family. She told her boss, she was like, oh, don't touch my door for an hour because I'm going to be in here. <laughs> they didn't touch her door. She was in the trade and you got to figure it out. So if your problem is I can't figure out the time, I don't have the time to trade. Cut something back. Had a conversation with your spouse. Try to figure it out. It might be asset class. But once again, if we start talking about futures for an exchange, um, you know, they're more advanced. They're, you know, if we're talking options and stock. Weak charts. Try to make your decisions on the weak chart. You don't have to even really like during the week is when you've already made the decision. All right. We break that low. You you Monday put an alert. Ooh. You know, I should be in. You've already figured out what your strike price is. You've already done the work. You just literally go to the bathroom and place the trade on your phone. Got to figure it out. Got to be resourceful. Might have to sacrifice some things, too. Um, um now let's say what are the two most powerful indicators that you know work? Um hmm. I'll give you one, and it's not that I don't want to give you multiple. It's not that I don't want to answer the question, but as soon as we get beyond one, we start talking about how the two work together, which is a longer conversation. So I'll say this. Uh, my favorite, I would probably say um, at the core, because I love statistics and it's personal and I got A's and stats because I flunked. I flunked stats the first time I took it. Oh, I'm wearing my IU shirt. I flunked it. Uh, Kelly School of Business. Shout out to any of my Hoosiers uh, watching. I flunked it in this huge lecture room with all, you know, all these students. And then in the summer class, that I had to take much smaller class and she spoke Russian. I could barely understand what the chick was saying, but she was a better teacher. And then I got an A in stats. So I was like, uh, so stats has been my thing. I think because I flunked it and I felt like I didn't flunk. Y'all flunked me. Like you failed me. I should give this, like, you should be able to grade your teachers. You should be able to give your teacher an F if they just a terrible teacher. You should. Anyway. So, um, because I love statistics, the, the, tool that i really fell in love with which does have a personal something and i actually met the guy who created it john bollinger i fell in love with bollinger bands because they help you understand volatility you're not gonna make money if the market is not volatile enough you need volume to get a trend to get momentum you need people buying in mass you need a catalyst you need a reason you need markets to move to make money all right. Some days you can't make money day trading because we're literally stuck in little ranges where Bollinger Bands are so tight. We're not going to trend. You might as well go do something else. A lot of people don't even know when you're in those days, which is why day trading is tougher. All right. That's why it's tougher. Some days you legitimately cannot really do anything. Like you won't get a trend. Only thing you can do is counter trend. Every time it pops up, short it down. Every time it drops, buy it back up. It's not going anywhere. All right. Matter of fact, while I say that real quick. Oh, so um, to answer your question, um, so Bollinger Bands I love, but the more advanced, um, 
you know, kind of updated, if you will. Um, there's a tool called a TTM squeeze, trade the market squeeze. And the squeeze is actually a combination. It's a hybrid of Bollinger Bands and Keltner channels. I know it just so technically I would say those are my two favorites. Bollinger Bands and Keltner channels combined, they make something called the squeeze, which is super powerful. It's a game changer. It really is. Just don't go against it <laughs> and learn it well, but don't go against it. All right. Uh, let me show you this real quick. Show you this real quick. Uh, okay. Check out today. 30 minute chart today. What do you notice? This is what you should notice. We got some resistance up here. We got some support down here. We're not trending. We probably won't trend today. Why? And why wouldn't we? Because yesterday, yesterday was such a strong, right off the open, little push up, and we just crash, 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 all the way to the close. After days like that, the next day, the psychology is like, ooh, bears have made a little money. They feeling good. So they're just relaxed and kind of chilling. If this is options and you got in early yesterday, you kind of relax, hoping the market drops and goes lower. Bulls are scared because of yesterday. Bulls are scared. Today, bulls were scary. I wouldn't say bears were scared today. Bears were just kind of content. Like, okay, we took the market back over yesterday. This ain't nothing but tug of war every day. That's really all this is. It's tug of war every day. All right, so today, nobody's winning. All right, all you could do is short from these highs or buy somewhere down here. That's all you can do. I mean, if I put it on the, the one minute, you'll see how crazy it looks. But we're really not going anywhere. Look at that. Imagine trying to find the trend if you trade off the one minute. What is the trend? What was the trend for the day? There really wasn't one. Now, if I could get in here and get super detailed and show you some entries, yeah, okay, cool. All you know, right. So a great trader can always figure out a way to make money, but today isn't the type of day that really gives you, you know, where you can risk 10 to make 30 to 40 points. It didn't move 30, 40 points today. All right. So all of that stuff plays into it, all of that. Um, let's see. Let me go back here. Let me hear some more questions. Kevin Beckles said noise cancellation and trust in the process. I said define noise for me. He said all the information coming from various places, including a platform such as this, not the educational side, but more so the protective opinion based side is counterproductive. Yeah. Um, there is in this current market, there's a lot of voices, gurus. All of that stuff. You got gurus who are learning from gurus. Here's the crazy thing. There's some really, really, really popular traders, black, whose brand is way bigger than mine in terms of reach. And um, I don't I don't know if people realize like and not that it matters because it doesn't. It's a compliment to me. right? So it's not a competitive. Thing, it's a compliment. But I found people who I, I, I literally I'm like, wow, you're watching me. Like. I can kind of see who's paying attention. You know what I'm saying? Who's watching all of these lives, you know? Um, so trust me when I say everybody has information overload. Everybody does. Um, I think that's a process of really finding who you trust. Um, it's a process of um, figuring out where you can get what I would almost call like community or group accountability and what i mean by that is if you're trading but you have some buddies that trade who do they listen to like you guys should have a little consensus of where you get your information you know like it doesn't make sense for if you got three buddies who trade each of you guys all three of you have five different people you listen to that's 15 different people if y'all are all listening to this one specific person maybe y'all should just follow that one person and then it can kind of you know what i'm saying less is more that's my thing for the year less is more Less trades because you'll be more um, selective about your trades if you take less. All right. Less stocks because it's less information to digest. Some of y'all trying to trade and use these scanners to trade anything moving. Right. Maybe you need to get really good with just trading the same five over and over. You learn the patterns better that way. All right. I mean, hell, it's like dating. Date one girl, one woman. You out here dating five. It's probably hard to. You know, <laughs> it's it's gonna be exciting. Yeah, you gonna you gonna have a dramatic, exciting, exhilarating life dating all them people. But 
maybe less is more. Maybe that lets you hone in and focus more and really know that person, that chart, that class, asset class, that stock. Maybe less is more, right? Um, that's it. So yeah, so so you have to not um distract. I know how we use the word distract. It's like, oh, that distracted me. No, no, nothing can distract you. You distract. You get off of the track. But we blame it on something else. Nothing can distract me. I can distract myself from my focus. Noble. Nothing can distract you. Like we act like it's something that just happened to us. Just because something pops up. Nope, I'm focused. Nope, I'm trading. Nope, I'm trying to read my Bible more. Nope, trying to get in this book to be a better husband. Nope, got to do this to be better at work. Stop letting everything that pops up distract y'all. Block it out. It's you distracting. Now study the words. Words we use. Tell us. They tell us everything. They tell us everything. I don't know how to say her. Yes, a woman. I don't know how to say her name exactly. <laughs> but she said my pullout game is weak. Oh, that's hilarious. She said her pullout. I got to find the applause for that one. And I ain't going to even make no sexual jokes right now. She said my pullout game is weak. Um, I understand what you mean. <laughs> um, getting out of the wrong trades when she needs to get out she doesn't get out that's back to very simple do you have a target and have you identified where if price goes here i don't want to stay in this and risk losing more because it may continue to go the other way and i'm just wrong a lot of times when we don't know when to get out of a trade it might just be ego. Like, and when I say ego, I mean believing and wanting something so bad that you just believe if I stay in it, it'll probably turn around. Right? Your ego, like it, it's it's unfortunately working against your logic. Your logic says, hey, if price goes above this, the trend may be changing. It doesn't make sense for me to stay in. I'll take my loss like a G, like a grown man or woman. I'll accept it. Find another trade. You can always take another trade. A lot of people get in a loss it's bad and you just stay in hoping like oh and this is literally turned around going the other direction trend and change you're going to just lose more sometimes losing is losing um deciding to take a loss is actually going to be as you go through this journey it's going to help you make more money i know that sounds weird but losing is going to help you make money some of y'all afraid to lose all right everybody loses Everybody loses. I don't care who they are. They lose. But if your losses are so small, like imagine this for a second. Imagine this for just a quick second, because this is exactly how I think. As a futures trader, when I'm on my futures game, right? Check this out. If I risk 10 points, as a matter of fact, let's keep the math simple. Let's just keep the math really simple. Let's say, um, uh, I'll do I'll do I'll do a thousand because it's just an easy hold number. Let's say I'm risking a thousand dollars on every trade to make at least a three to one. So I'm risking a thousand to make three. <clears throat> and let's say Monday hit my goal. I made three thousand. If I'm disciplined, I literally have to lose now four times for my account. If we're literally talking about a brand new trader who's studied, done all the work, yada, 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 right? If this is the math behind how you trade, if you risk 10, 10 points with two contracts, right? And just nice, easy whole number for the ES. Thousand bucks to make 3,000. And your very first trade, your discipline, you get in at the right place, your stop loss in, is in place. Boop, it goes to the high. The high was like 35 points. You took 30. Bam, you made 3,000. Now you got to lose four times in a row. So what am I saying to you? What I'm saying is, is if you win twice in a row, you now would have to lose seven times in a row to actually have your account go negative. So a lot of times, some uh, some people like me get real, it's potentially manipulative. Uh, maybe it's just them being creative. But I've heard traders talk about like never losing. Sometimes what they're really saying is their risk to reward and their discipline is so, so um, the math works with them. Their risk to reward is at least three and above. They don't lose a lot. They win uh, 70, 60 percent of their trades, even if you only won 50 percent of your trades. 50 percent. Let's go with that. 50 percent win rate. You only win 50 percent of the time. Half the time you're wrong. But you stay with that discipline of three to one. So every time you lose, you lose a G. Say so you took 10 trades last week with this type of, you know, 
math behind how you trade. You would lose 5,000. You lost five times, negative 5K. But you won five times. You're only a decent trader. You know, you win, you know, you win a little, you win. Okay, cool. All right, 50% win rate. But if you won five times with a locked in, very disciplined three to one, that's 15,000 in profits minus the five you lost, you still made 10. And then the next week for you to like erase that one week of discipline with a three to one strategy over 10 trades for that 11th trade, like to go negative, you literally now have to lose what 11 times in a row. You're not going to lose 11 times. The probability of you losing 11 times in a row, if you're disciplined, is almost, it's almost zero. You're almost more likely to make money once you actually get in the right groove with the right math behind you. This is, this is a business, y'all. It's a business. Got to think about it like that, that way, you know, process all this stuff that way. Um, Okay. Stefan said, I'm a data-driven, oh, this is a good one. Said, I'm a data-driven data driven person, which causes, oh, I kind of hate this already, causes a paralysis of analysis, um, opening a position, and uh, a quick draw and closing a position, all looking at different data points. Also, there is um, there is a definitive, not speculative reason for everything that happens in this world. I need to find out why when something doesn't go the way I expect it. So let me say this too. Um, I wanted to make a little class, a little, I don't know, training or something. I, I I still may do it. I didn't do it last year. I was going to call it how to lose like a winner. Some losers lose like losers. Some losses you lose like a loser. Your mental capital gets drained. You start doubting yourself. You start going to review charts like the chart was somehow wrong. Like you're looking for some. Why did I lose? You lose because loss is a part of the process and you haven't accepted that. You haven't accepted that. All right. Winners. When a winner loses, winner mindset, when you lose, you know what? You know what? Uh, Y'all just saw the NBA finals. You know what happens when Golden State loses a game? The next game, they forget about the previous game. It's a new game. The next trade don't have nothing to do with the last one. It doesn't. But if it does mentally, if you've connected the two, if you're grieving from the last trade in the next trade, you already lost the next one. You in the last you in this game thinking about the last game. It don't work like that. Uh, Dealey, what's up, bro? He said, back to what you were saying a few minutes ago. Uh, how about just focusing on one issue, uh, the spy, and learning it inside and out? Yeah, and see, here's a beautiful thing about comments like that. Really great comment. Love that you're thinking, processing it through, right? So, and think about what happened. He just took what I said, less is more, and said, let's, let's, even, let's even streamline that even more. Right. Why don't we focus on one thing, learning it inside and out? And here's what I don't even know if you realize that you said, but that you said. If you focused on the S&P and you literally knew the S&P like the back of your hand. Like the back of your hand to the degree where you almost you roughly know if of those 500 companies, somebody could throw out a company and you like, no, nah, that's not an S&P. Like, you know it that well. Right. You know, the chart patterns, you know, the history of it. You know, you you just know it. You know it like the back of your hand. That one. Here's the beauty of that. Because it's an index, because it's the world's benchmark, you can trade options on the S&P. You can buy calls or puts. Some uh, uh, <laughs> options, there's some uh, ways to technically go both directions at the same time. You don't technically have to be on one side of the position. You could literally be making money long after a big run up. And literally get in um, as you see that move fading. You can actually even buy puts, right? And kind of hedge as it goes the other way. Because eventually you're going to get out of the longs. Why? You only get out of the longs because the trend slows. It stops. It only stops because bulls stop buying. Which means bears are going to start buying. Back to what I said earlier about your entry is somebody. Your exit is somebody else's entry. All right. So with the S&P, you can trade S&P futures. You can trade at 3 in the morning. You could trade um, using, you know, week charts, long term, uh, um, you know, you can go six months out, options, contracts. Um, it keeps you connected to everything else, because if the S&P is down 40 percent, oh, my God, <laughs> everything else is going to be down as well. So 
love that. Wanted to add some context to it because yes, S and P when you when you start focusing on an index, like if I could take if I if I literally had the temperament, patience, and could build it and could do like a two year program, like literally a two year program to teach you like everything I think people should really, 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 really know. Yeah, that would definitely be a part of it where you just master you like you really, really, really dig in. Because if you know what the S&P or let's say NASDAQ is doing, you can be in options. You can have some long term, you know, be long term in NASDAQ, too. You can day trade NASDAQ, too. All right. So there's multiple ways to make money off of just NASDAQ. The stock buying directly, the options. The futures and even the futures options, which nobody talks about because almost nobody trades it. Very rare product to hear about being traded. Uh, so great comment. Great comment. Love that. Love that. Uh, oh, um, Stefan was talking about um, uh, speculative. There's a reason for everything. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. Like, you can't worry about everything. You just sometimes you lose, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it's a report you didn't know about. It's just a large order, you know. You can't really do too much if some fund dumps a ton of their shares and you were long and you had no idea. Tuesday, today is Wednesday. Wednesday at it's two o'clock at two o two p.m. They're about to dump a bunch of shares because they're just moving their positions around. There's nothing you could do if you're long. As soon as they start to dump. That might just change the trend. There's nothing you could do. All your indicators were right. You did everything you could do. My thing is just lose um, like a winner. Lose no more than you decide to lose where it makes sense. And it's balanced with your mental account and your actual financial account, your cash account. That's all you could do. And then trade again. And trust that tomorrow you still have the same opportunity to win, even if it was the exact same setup. Right? Exact same setup. Yesterday's loss has nothing to do with today. Nothing. Um, oh, let me go back. Uh, let's see. Oh. Sarah, Sarah. <clears throat> What's up, Sarah? She said, uh, when you don't have any money, your options are limited. A lot of people like this one. <sighs> oh. So here's what I told her. I said, I hear you. I've definitely been there for sure, right? And I said, do you value practice, though? Do you value practicing trading on paper and honing your skills and your analysis and building some, right, some good mental capital on having a repeatable process? Because even though it's not real, right, even though it's not real, the skills still are what you gonna are going to need. And I said, Kobe, Ali, Serena. They all had to practice to be decent. So think about that. If in sports we practice just to know basics, you practice. You don't, pra I mean, practice. Y'all thinking of Allen Iverson, right? Practice, we talking about practice. You don't practice to be great. Great has a whole nother set of requirements. You practice just to have basic fundamentals of a thing, right? So I was just like, yo, like maybe if cash is low and you know it, Maybe you just need to like accept that for now. You know, it's hard to, I don't say it's hard. Um, It's just as hard to grow a $10,000 account as it is to grow a hundred hundred thousand or a million dollar account. And why do I say that? It's harder emotionally, but the math is the same. If you're risking 2% on every trade, whether you're risking on a 10,000, a hundred thousand or a million dollar account, the percentages are the same. The charts are the same. Only thing changes is the number in the computer. Instead of buying two shares, you're buying 2,000, right? So we can make that the same. But how do you get from the $10,000 account to the million-dollar account? It's all up here in the mental and in the psychology of you building repeatable processes that help you to really, like, for real, for real, get confident, right? So if you can't do that, uh, and what I said was even when I was broke, <laughs> I was still trading. I was just practicing. I was in the gym practicing. It hasn't been a week that's gone by, literally, since I started trading, quit my job, went through some, some depression, some dark times, just trying to figure out, oh, my God, I didn't quit a six-figure job. 
and then trading got really really tough because psychologically now i need to make the money whereas when i was working i was just like yeah it was just fun you know this is easy when it's fun even when you're making stupid mistakes right because you don't have that mental stress of i gotta make money right so uh yeah she responded back too so what's up sarah sarah great um great um perspective thank you for being that vulnerable to offer that up because yeah some people a lot of people got small accounts and don't really have the money and we don't often talk about like you know what like what's comfortable i don't know what's comfortable for you i'll tell you what's comfortable for me <laughs> right and they don't have to match you know um freddie alexander said patience i said patience i said okay do you mean the patience of waiting for the right trade or patience for not exiting too fast and let's talk about patience for a quick second here's the crazy part y'all here's the crazy part when you think about patience think about this everybody has done this you've thought you you know you've seen your analysis you've done the analysis you got a trade you hit the button you set up the order it triggers you're in and oh uh, shoot it's, it's it's going against you as soon as you get in you like ah, you it feels personal like lord why did I do something like why? Why as soon as I get in the market turns around like are is somebody watching me? Somebody watching me? Some can't right? You it feels personal. <laughs> I know it does right. But here's the crazy part. A lot of us will exhibit crazy patience when we're losing because you're hoping that it just turns around and you just wait. You should get out at some point, but you're still patient and you just wait and you wait. So, so maybe that's not patience. <laughs> maybe that's like delusional hope, but they look the same because you're not doing anything. When what you should be doing a lot of times is patiently waiting for price to hit your target. All right. It's going your way. You shouldn't be so emotionally aroused. And I use the term for a reason. You literally shouldn't be so aroused. All right. That you about to jump out. Relax. The only way you can learn to trust your trades is to go through that pain of trusting your trades. That's all you can do. That's it. Ain't no shortcuts to that. There's no hacks to that. You got to wait. All right. You got to learn how to, in, in the moment, in between, hit the trade to profit. Whatever that time frame is, day, month, minutes, hours, whatever it is, you have to control your psyche in the moment. I'm in a trade. I did everything I could do. This is the process. If I lose, I'm okay with losing. I'm going to patiently wait. I'm not going to sabotage this. I believe in myself. I'm. You got, you got to talk to yourself. <laughs> uh, welcome to trading. Most Probably the most psychological game you'll ever play on some level. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh um okay patience yep christopher johns what's up bro he said everything so far to be honest everything damn that's the <laughs> it's so much information it's telling you trying to retain all the information you can't retain it all so right there perspective let me hurt your feelings and help you all at the same time how long is it going to take you to be a really good trader like to be to feel like you've really uh, mastered the craft How long? How long do you think? Because what you think is what you expect. And if your expectation is off, then the reality is going to be tough. When you have the right expectation, it's a little bit easier to like, right, go through the process. I personally think it's just like anything else. How long does it take you to become a good doctor or a good engineer or a good coder? Hell, even if you just, you a, a social media guru, you know how to build and create content. Even that took a couple years to be get good enough for somebody would pay you to do it. All right. So yeah, the trading's gonna it's gonna take you some time. It's going to take you some time. I I probably would say, even if you like, geez, have the greatest community mentor, yada yada, it's it's still gonna take you years. I wanna say at minimum at least five. I really wanna say five to ten. You talking about mastery? You're not gonna master the most potentially most um rewarding and complex, convoluted, complicated thing we've created to make money. 
This makes this makes all the money. Duh, like all the billionaires, they're in the market for a reason. Right? So it's gonna take you some time. Uh, he said major problem is also emotions yesterday jumped out of uh jumped out of what would have been a winning trade for fear of losing, only to hope, only to hop in today and lose. So peep that out. That's what I call um it's like being on the wrong, it, you know, it's almost like rhythm. All right, you know how like some people just for real. Some people really don't have any rhythm. <laughs> you can play a beat. They just they just going they're going to struggle. And you like why can you not catch the beat? It's almost hard for me to be off uh to not be on beat, right? Cuz I got rhythm. Right? That's kind of what happens with the market. That's what happened with him. All right? That's a perfect example. Sometimes that'll happen. You'll lose your rhythm. All right, and then you you literally almost get to where if you don't pause and correct and stop trading for a day or something, like you got to do something to actually stop and get off that that bad rhythm, that bad pattern, and realize you're on it. So what he said he did was his emotions. Yesterday he jumped out of what would have been a winning trade. So think about that. And let's say once again, let's go back to simple math. Let's use a thousand. It's just a nice big number. Uh, well, really not really big, but you know, nice number, right? I think most people would love to make a thousand dollars a day, right? There's nobody who can't. You'll be okay if you're making 20, 15, and 20 Gs a month, right? Uh, assuming you're single, right? Um, I was thinking about something. Anyway, um, so if he was supposed to make his three to one return yesterday, he was supposed to make 3,000. Let's even use a small number. You were supposed to risk 100 yesterday to make 300, but you messed it up. Ah, okay, cool. And today, you lost, but you only lost what you were supposed to lose. You lost on your, let's say you, you got a max of two trades a day. You lost two trades today. So you're down 200 on your account between today and yesterday. When if you just would have made it yesterday, your 300 would have been reduced to 100, but you're still in profit. That's where like bad mistakes compound with trading. One bad mistake might lead to the next, which leads to the next. You go back and you're like, damn, if I was disciplined, I'd be up two G's for this week. I'm down $600. And it's being on the wrong side of the trade. It's losing that harmony. It's losing it. It's being on the wrong side, just making those um those same types of mistakes uh, over and over, over and over. Okay, we almost at the end. It's cool. Uh, my guy Dwayne Pugh, what's up, bro? He said making a mental shift from uh, making money mentally to a losing losing less mentality. I said, wait, what do you mean, losing less mentality? Are you saying you've been hyper focused on what you can make but not managing the losses well, or are you losing big amounts that are taking your profits, or are you losing a lot of small profits that are still? I mean losing a lot of times small losses that are still blocking you from making profit profits he said after thinking about it which is the point that's why you need somebody like me because i need you to think about it after thinking about it i guess i'm saying i want to become better at taking high probability trade oh that's my friend that my friend i, I, I just do that <laughs> if i if y'all really knew me i'm so offensive I'll be doing voices. I, I I literally I'm a comedian on outside of this. I just ain't really released that to the world yet because I don't want y'all to I don't want y'all to take it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, but uh, my friend, my friend, great insight. That's what's helpful. That's what you need to be doing. Deeply, critically thinking about these things. He self-analyzed just because I gave him the question. After thinking about it, I guess what I'm saying is, how do I take? Now we got something to work on. At first, I don't know what the hell. I can't help you. I don't know what you need. I don't even know. What, I literally didn't know what that meant. I'm like, what do you mean? Making money mentality to a losing less mentality. We always trying to lose less. I don't understand what you're saying. You got to put it. What's the real? What are we really working towards? Like, what's the real issue? After thinking about it, I guess I was saying I want to be better at taking higher probability trades more consistently. Which then tells me. We got to talk about high probability, low probability, counter trending, trending, right? It's easy now to dig in because there's just principles and components that work consistently every time for every market and every time frame. There is a such thing as a high probability trade and a low probability trade. There is. There is. 
that's where your indicators come into place you know entries and really knowing i shouldn't enter until this happens right and being okay with saying yeah this is a little lower of an entry i could get in up here at this thing but i'm gonna wait till here because then i know the trend is really confirmed Man, it ain't about perfect prices it's about high probability that price will continue to do what you want it to do that's what it's about it really is <clears throat> it really is i'll just put my little side camera on for a second because i like this camera i wish i could make this my main camera that's sharp Ooh, that's a sharp picture i'm sorry i'm admiring my own line i did this yesterday <laughs> i did this yesterday all right uh let me see i got any more uh tish peaks said day trading entries exits which i guess means entries and exits which basically is systems a lot of this if we put all of this together there are different components of systems that people don't have um and even as an educator sometimes i know so much that it's it's a challenge to simplify it enough to get you confident to know that it works because i see so much like i could look at a chart and literally show you the counter trending entry or the trending entry you know like just even that All right so as soon as i see something i see what i know to look at based on my system but because my system has come from systems and systems and systems that didn't work over all these years like it's literally just been a evolution of trying things that oh this didn't work and then oh bollinger bands don't always work when we do this oh keltner channels do but oh and i gotta put them together oh but i need something oh no let me get rid of that right that's that's literally for me what this journey has been talk to uh talk to any decent trader who's been in this for five or more years they should be able to tell you i used to do this but then that doesn't work for this reason so i changed that and i got rid of this but now i used it right you're supposed to like optimize as you go and a lot of you guys i love you i'm gonna say this though a lot of y'all want perfect systems from people like me and yes that's the job you know get that whoever whoever you learn from whoever you know cool um i could care less you know but there's so much more than even do this this and this there's more there's always more this stuff is complex there's no like perfect entry even my last futures class I started off and for like half the class, I didn't even tell say anything about like this double. Um, I technically have two entries. Why do I have two entries? Because sometimes things are so clear, it's a really high probability trade. I want to take it. Sometimes it's not as perfect as I would like. So I give it, I, I have like a little grace, a little um, almost confirmation built in. Right. One price is generally better than the other, whether I'm long or short, but I got two different entries and I usually will, you know, I go with my main one most of the time, but I got a second entry. It's almost like a sub system inside the system. All right. So like these very perfect, super rigid, you could just literally have some high school senior do it. I mean, it's, it's nice. It's cute to think that trading works that way and that somebody can give you some perfect system, but the reality is is even like i've had people who, who take my classes and sign up for my stuff who have literally taken everything out class is way more expensive than what i charge which is why i'm you know i got some a few things to work on because i've gotten a lot of feedback this year and last year so i know where i want my classes to be they're not there yet they're not perfect they're not i got a whole bunch of those small things to work on i know i know what i know right but but that feedback has helped and once again um the reality is even if you took my best thing and joel's best thing and a few other traders who i won't say their names because i don't know them personally but i would love to but i just don't know all right if you took all of our stuff that's just gonna confuse you <laughs> then you're gonna have to figure out what works best for you what makes the most sense for you you know um sometimes it's just the person you know the, the person and your connection with them you just feel like you can learn better from them we all doing the same stuff on some level i don't care who you are i don't care who you are if i pull up the chart that i pulled up all right if 
Uh, this is a uh, Nasdaq. Wait, hold on. Let me go. Let me actually go to Nasdaq. Um, we we'll go to the thirty minute. Nasdaq today. Nasdaq futures. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter who you are, how much money you have. None of that stuff matters. Look at this chart. <laughs> There's no major trend today. So, if you were Jesus, yeah, you could have perfectly bought this bottom or shorted this high, but you're not him. All right, now, if you had the right tools, which I'm going to give y'all a little gem real quick. See this down here? This is a squeeze. Squeeze had a red dot. Had a red dot at 9 o'clock before the market opened. So that's telling you that the market already is tight, probably is not going to trend. Don't expect to, like, just relax. You're probably not going to make any money today. You probably are going to have to counter trend if you actually are going to make money. And all we've been doing is back to the high. Back down here to 11.6. Back up here testing this same area again. Like we're not going anywhere yet. All right. So you got to be, you know, really fast to be catching these. Like kind of, and I can do it. But I don't even like days like this. Actually, I take that back. I do like the days like this. Because um, I already know what the day is going to look like. And some days I just may lean towards the um, buying or shorting, right? Because neither one is going to really pay out some 30, 40 point move yet because we don't have enough volatility. We don't have enough volatility to do it. So my calendar is not open right now. I know a few of you guys have reached out asking about consults. Um, You got to DM me because <laughs> I just have not been... Um, you know, I've been been living, traveling a little bit, you know, um, hanging out with my people. But I'm kind of getting back in work mode and it's summertime. I've done this for years. People in the summertime don't really be aggressive. For some reason, kids go back to school. Everybody get back and like, OK, let's get this trade. Back. That's cool. So stay with me. Follow my channel. Um, Follow me on IG. Just being noble. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube uh, channel. Um, it's being noble. You're watching me probably on one of these anyway, Facebook. But make sure you subscribe so you get all these videos. Some of the best content out. And there. I know it is because I, you know, I pay attention to the industry. I watch. I try to stay up abreast of what's out. You know, and there's there is some, a, a lot of good stuff out. You know, it's a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of bad stuff too. You know. Uh, somebody said that Nvidia uh, move was quick at the open to the downside. It did most of the ATR for the last few days. Yeah. ATR's average true range. Uh, it's just an indicator that helps you to know, like, what's the average range, average true range? How much can I expect price to go? If the average true range is a dollar on whatever stock, you probably not going to make $3 on it to $3, you know, per, depending on how many, you're not going to make a $3 move. <laughs> and now you're expecting the um, what's not probable to happen. It's a it's a recipe for not winning. All right. So all this stuff is very, very much so. This is a game of logic and sound reason and emotional discipline. But you're human. What makes trading hard is you being human. Me and Joel we used to have. A, uh, oh, snap. We used to have like fake robot names. I think his was Joe Boticus. And mine was no, no something. Nobletron. I don't know. So what we would do? Saturday, after the week is over, no emotion. Cool, we made money. We lost money, whatever, right? We're reviewing. We would go back over the week because we pretty much started to realize how to trade, like, you know, very systematic, you know, a system. Uh, we would go back and look over the week and say, if I was a robot, how much would I have made? Like, if I could execute perfectly every single time, how much would I have made? And then we would measure that versus what we actually made or lost. And I guarantee you, to this day, Robot Noble is always better than Real Noble. Always. Because that one little, little fear, doubt, hesitation. Mm, you skip that one trade, it works out. Ah, I should have made money on that. Mm. Even if you up, you could have made more, right? So it takes a while to get there. Enjoy the journey. Um. Thanks for watching. Share this video, as, as I always say, with somebody that you know and that you love that needs to start taking investing and trading more serious.
Maybe somebody you just want to start thinking. Maybe somebody you need to be a bit more of an accountability partner because you're trying to do it, but you need your friend, your brother, your sister. You need whoever that person is. Send this video to them. I'm making the plea now for you. If somebody sent you this video, it's because they're ready to make some money with you. They're ready to make this money with you. They just need you to get serious. So let's get serious because it's here every day. Every day. I'm going to talk to y'all soon. Thanks for watching. And, uh, Peace.